If you're blonde, wear red if you're a redhead, wear socks and sandals, look fake, look chic, look shake, be a princess. Hello and assalamu alaikum. So 22% of the world's population is actually Muslim, which is almost a quarter of the world. The point is though, that that short video you just saw, was just me in a video for a couple of seconds being myself, and yet it shocked the world. And it just made me think that something so small can have such a major impact. I was simply being myself. My point today is that the influence of fashion can literally change the world. We have movies, we have music, and it's so sad to see that seeing a Muslim for the first time, represent a mainstream fashion label such as H&M, has made headlines and made the whole world think, oh my God, what's happening? Like, you know, is the fashion industry changing? There was a lot of criticism, a lot of love. And it just made me think, what is the big deal? So as much as I thought what the big deal was, I started to then look a little bit deeper and I realized that as much as we think the industry is really diverse, it's actually really not. When it comes to retail stores hiring staff, yes, definitely, we see diversity. When it comes to hiring people in head office, yes, we see diversity. But from my experience so far, I've seen that the higher up you go in the industry, the less and less diverse it becomes, especially when it comes to their marketing tools. And a part of me could feel insulted and another part of me is curious as to why. We have, however, seen in recent news a very positive change. Some people may disagree, but Dolce & Gabbana being a luxury brand, being in the forefront of fashion and representing Islam indirectly by using a Muslim dress, which is an abaya and a hijab, on a model, regardless of what her faith is, is such a big change and such a big influence on the world without people really realizing. Although, you know, with every positive, there is another side. There is still definitely a long way to go. We can, we can definitely see that, you know, she's a very attractive woman, the outfit's great, but I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think she's representing the demographic that they're trying to appeal to correctly still, and this again is still showing us that we have just achieved a slight drop in the ocean to what we really need to fully achieve. This whole experience has made me realize that I'm not only a hijabi model, I've also kind of had this weight placed on me as a spokeswoman for hijab, for modesty, for fashion, for Islam, and of course I wouldn't change it for the world, but it just shows me that we still have a long way to go in changing people's mentalities because I can tell you some of the interviews I've had, if you listened to some of the questions, I mean, they would all start off relatively similar, very samey, samey, like, you know, oh my God, so you're like the first model. This is incredible, like wearing a hijab. Like, what did your mom say? This is, this is completely great. Like in America, like we've never seen this. So what do you think about ISIS? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, can, next question, is that okay, please? <laughs> and literally, that was one of many. I'd speak to people from South Korea, from Colombia, I'm not going to do their accents, but it's very similar again. It's along the lines of, this is great, you know, we think this is amazing, but you know, why are Muslim women forced to wear hijab? Why do men make you wear it? Why are you oppressed and you're still following this religion? Why does hijab mean oppression in your religion? Why does the Quran say you wear hijab and you are oppressed as a woman? What the hell? <laughs> Be careful, I don't swear now. <laughs> so obviously, again, it made me realize we have a long way to go and coming from a family where my parents, you know, being from Pakistani and Moroccan origin, especially my dad, typical Arab, very much into politics. I definitely uh, 
wasn't alone in this. He had his say, he definitely put his foot in it at times, and you know, I'd come home, sometimes quietly, just to avoid the last interview or the last time I was on the news, and still it would be like, Maria? Yes? Hi, Dad. Maria, I, okay, uh, sit down, take your shoes, we need to speak very important. I, <laughs> I, I, I see uh, with the BBC, I don't know, it was ITV, it was something. <laughs> Why you don't say? Why you don't say that Britain and Morocco are the best country in the world. <laughs> Why you don't mention this one? Uh, Dad, it wasn't really bad. Why you don't talk about uh, Dar Marrakesh, your uncle's restaurant? Why you don't speak? Uh, <laughs> you must to promote the family. <laughs> um, okay, Dad, yeah, yeah, okay. Next, you're very stupid. You still have very long, much to learn. So as you can imagine, yes, a lot of pressure coming from all angles. The reason I'm sharing this with you, though, is because I want you to realize that Although, again, we have got a long way to go, hijab isn't a representation of oppression. And I feel by using, again, something like this, a picture, simply, simply just a picture like this, regardless whether she's a Muslim or not, again, just the fact that we are seeing hijab and abaya in mainstream fashion in the media, it makes people understand that there is another side to Islam. If we can't change the negative, why not add a positive to it? So, I can see that there are a lot of women in hijab sitting here today, and I do feel like I want to personally address to you, as well as everyone else, that for me, this was an example that, regardless of my hijab, I was still able to achieve something by simply being myself. I have been... Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, I didn't expect it to blow up the way that it did. And I, again, I was literally being myself. So imagine how many intelligent girls there are here, far more intelligent than me, than me. And they are able to do such great things by simply being themselves. We live in an era now where everything is almost overpowered by social media. There is always the other side of social media where there is so much pressure placed on men and women. And I, I think Personally, from looking at things like Instagram, I can see with a lot of Muslim women wearing hijab, we feel that we are still conforming to trying to sexualize ourselves in a way to appeal to get somewhere in life. Like, we feel that is compulsory to do makeup and hijab tutorials, and this is the way we have to beautify ourselves so much without people even knowing our inside, just to kind of get our message out, just to spread something, just to do something positive, and feel that we need to be acknowledged by people to feel that we are successful, when this is totally untrue. We don't need the consent or the validation from social media or whoever to validate ourselves that we are doing something great. The most important thing is to not look at other people for validation. It's literally, everything comes from you. You saw the clip, it wasn't that long at all. I wasn't doing anything more than literally being myself. I even dressed myself, to be honest. I, even when it came to like my, the hijab wore, and I told them, you need to stitch two hijabs, I can't wear it, it's too small. Like, everything was just literally me being me. And it has made a change, and I hope that all of you can feel the same way today. Whatever job you're in, whatever sector, whatever you're doing, you can make a change as well with something so small, so big, whatever it is. I just want everyone to feel that there is a purpose to your lives. And thank you again.